Well, if you've ever dreamt about coming up with a big idea that could make your fortune, then you might consider heading along to a lecture by electrical engineer and entrepreneur Neville Jordan. The 2012 Wellingtonian of the Year is delivering this year's Pickering Public Lecture Series, which hopes to stimulate interest in engineering. Neville Jordan started out cleaning sewers in Petoni, but went on to found a multinational telecommunications company that was listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. He joins me now. Thanks very much for your time this morning, Neville. Um, one, of your morning, key, Simon. one of your key messages is uh, invest in people, 60% in people and just 40% in ideas. Uh, but how can you pick the right people? After having lived a few summers, I, I think you develop a certain nose or uh, sense for what people are all about. So the first thing I look for is past performance and not only success, but also do they carry a few battle scars? Have they learned from those mistakes? Uh, do they seem to have uh, a loyalty to the idea, to the organisation? And then uh, do they have some good ideas? Can, have they got the stamina and the courage to carry these ideas through. So all of those are, are people characteristics. So, so those so are the, the things that I look for. The, the idea itself does not make a fortune? No, not at all. The, uh, the road to fortune is littered with good ideas that could not be carried through. Either people didn't have the wherewithal themselves or the cash, of course, uh, or, or the plain uh, stickability to carry it through. OK, now you talked about mistakes just a moment ago. How important are mistakes and what kinds have you made? <laughs> they're quite important. I think that uh, as long as people learn from them, then they're very, very important. So the kind of mistakes I've made, I've missed shifts in technology. Uh, when I was uh, about a 12-year-old, uh, when others were experimenting with explosives, I was experimenting with a, an atomic bomb. An which atomic didn't bomb? Work. <laughs> yes, which didn't work, thank well, goodness. Thank, thank goodness for that. What, what, what drove you to experiment with an atomic bomb? Because I was always wanting to do something different, to experiment, uh, to find out about the world. So that was one of, uh, not so much a mistake, but a thing that didn't work. And I learned from that. And that's what I look for. Not so much 12-year-olds uh, uh, making errors, but in later life, have they learned from mistakes. So how did you personally manage to turn uh, an idea into a company that ended up on the NASDAQ? Was it just, was it just hard people. work and perseverance? Yes, and, and also an amazing team uh, that I was able to assemble uh, around the company. The company started with just $2,000 and then built from there. But that could not have happened without an arrange, uh, a whole range of people, both from New Zealand and offshore. So uh, I owe everything to that group of people. OK, now, I mean, you, you sold out of the company, but you have set up uh, uh, sort of um, investment funds here to try and get that sort of Silicon Valley mentality in New Zealand. Seems to be a hard road to get that going here, though. It, it is pretty hard. Uh, I regard the whole of New Zealand as Silicon Valley. We have, uh, what, four and a half million people, which is, not, uh, which is what, uh, a third of the population, say, of San Francisco, and only the same as uh, Sydney or Melbourne. So I regard the whole of New Zealand as Silicon Valley. So my aim is to invest here and also to encourage young people here into uh, science, engineering, technology, all of those disciplines that can uh, give life and meaning to, to ideas. OK, Neville Jordan, look, thank you very much for your testimony and I hope you stimulate some uh, ideas and enthusiasm around the country. Good. Thank you, Simon. All right, time now to look at the sports stories making news this morning. Here's Sam.